This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York, joined by my co-host Juan Gonzalez in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Hi, Juan. Hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Well, we're going to start with a warning to our listeners and viewers. Today's show includes graphic images and descriptions, some that you may certainly have heard and seen before. Yes, this week marks the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center towers in New York City and the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., that killed nearly 3,000 people. We'll never know exactly how many people, because those who go uncounted in life go uncounted in death, perhaps the undocumented workers around the area. But we begin our coverage looking at the impact of the toxic cancer-causing smoke and dust that hung over Ground Zero in Manhattan as the fire burned for 100 more days. At the time, the Environmental Protection Agency told people who worked at the site and lived and went to school near it that the air was safe to breathe. In the years that followed, more than 13,200 first responders and survivors have been diagnosed with a variety of cancers and chronic respiratory and gastrointestinal illnesses. At least, well, close to 1,900 first responders, survivors and workers who recovered bodies and cleaned up the wreckage have since died from illnesses, many of them linked to their time at Ground Zero. For the whole hour, we're looking at an enraging new documentary that exposes the massive environmental and public health crisis caused by the 9-11 attack and how politicians and the EPA head, Christine Todd Whitman, the former governor of New Jersey, put Wall Street's interests before public health in the aftermath. It also shows how 9-11 responders and survivors had to fight for health care justice while they were sick and dying, going to Washington scores of times in wheelchairs, on crutches, with oxygen. Yes, tons of toxic dust fell on New York City 9-11. While concentrated in the 16-acre disaster site, wind carried the chemical contaminants throughout the city of Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens. This is the trailer for the new documentary, 9-11, Unsettled Dust. Yeah, it seems like it's just sort of. Oh, no, Once we saw the actual initial reports, we just started realizing there was uh, benzene being emitted. There was lead in the air. I was already getting warnings that there were many more uh, potential toxic exposures. When we heard Christy Todd Whitman get on TV and say the air quality is safe, we were horrified. The concentrations are such that they don't pose a health hazard. We're going to make sure everybody's safe. You know, not only did we inhale and breathe in the air, we were drinking it and eating it. And I, I, I bitched him on to anybody who would listen to me. My husband and I and other people who were engineers went down to the site, and there was no question that it was an unhealthy site. They didn't have a mask in the beginning because some people were using Home Depot masks, even the guys at Ground Zero. On 9-11, responded to World Trade Center, breathing in all the toxic uh, air and uh, they said it was safe to breathe. We're talking about human life. We're talking about men that couldn't be here, that have traveled with maybe 80 trips that are made to D.C., that are laying in ICU or at home with IVs in them. The first responders were told that the Drug Act would be included. They were told this last week. It'd be included in the transportation bill passed last week. Not one of the first responders standing with me here today should have to be here today. Not one of them should have to take another trip to Washington. This is about... Washington, D.C., helping out people from 431 congressional districts that went to ground zero. New York wasn't attacked. This country was attacked. That's the trailer for the new documentary 9-11's Unsettled Dust, which premieres later this week on PBS stations in New York, New Jersey, and Long Island. 
Uh, for more, we're joined by Lisa Katzman, the film's director and producer. One of the key figures in the film is Democracy Now!'s Juan Gonzalez, uh, who is not only co-host today, but his critical work at the beginning of um, the time after 9-11 just changed the landscape of how people understood what was happening near and around the pile. He and Joel Kupferman of the Environmental Law and Justice Project were among the first to expose the public health and environmental crisis at Ground Zero in a series of reports for The New York Daily News. Juan Gonzalez is also the author of the 2002 book Fall Out. The Environmental Consequences of the World Trade Center Collapse. So, Juan, we're beginning with you. I mean, that New York Daily News cover that caused so much um, outrage and response, an attack on you, um, it was in October. It said exclusive, and we're going to show it right here, Toxic Zone was the Headline, levels of benzene, dioxin, PCBs and other dangerous chemicals at ground zero exceed federal standards. That may not surprise people now, Juan, but you're the one who had it on the cover at a time when the EPA head um, was telling the country all was well in lower Manhattan in terms of safety for people returning to work. Talk about how you came to understand how toxic Ground Zero was. Well, Amy, I, I actually had started— uh, I did an article about less than three weeks after the, uh, the attack on the World Trade Center on, on September 28th, which uh, began to talk about the high levels of asbestos that Joel Kufferman had discovered in his own independent testing that he had done around uh, around Ground Zero, even as far down as Battery Park, uh, and uh, ex a very high levels of asbestos and of fiberglass, which ended up being actually responsible for much of the scarring of lungs that many of the uh, first responders and other people downtown had. And uh, so I'd actually done two articles before uh, before that big uh, front page story. But then, of course, uh, as uh, Joel was able to get even more public records requests on health testing that had been hidden from the public, uh, that uh, big October 26 article, as I recall, was the one that laid out uh, those findings. Uh, and the response was uh, unbelievable, the backlash against it from the mayor's office, from uh, the EPA, uh, to, the, to the Daily News, to the point that, uh, actually, my editors uh, pulled back. <laughs> uh, they began, after that, uh, beginning to uh, hold my columns. And at one point, I actually had to go to the editor-in-chief at the time, a guy by the name of Ed Kozner, and I said, Ed, why are you holding up my uh, follow-ups on this? And he says, well, you know, City Hall says this, and, and uh, EPA says you're overstating the problem, you're sensationalizing, and the New York Times is not following our stories, and uh, none of the other press are agreeing with us. And, uh, and I said to him, well, since when do we depend on other media to tell us how to report what we find? Uh, so it became clear that the paper had been um, cowed uh, by the, the federal and, and the city government. So I said to Kozner at the time, I said, Ed, you don't really know me. You just got here uh, about a year ago, and, and, uh, and I don't know you. So this is what I'm going to do. You run the paper. You're in charge of the paper, and I'm in charge of my column. So uh, I'm going to keep writing about this uh, issue, because I don't want it on my conscience uh, that 20 years later, people are going to start getting sick and dying, because we didn't warn them of the potential health effects here. Uh, and uh, so I'm not going to stop writing about this. And the paper did end up killing some of my columns, but they ran most of them at the back of the page, uh, at the back of the paper. Uh, my only mistake was believing that it would take 20 years for people to get sick. It actually took far less. <laughs> took about uh, five years uh, for the, uh, the the deaths and the uh, and the severe illnesses to really become apparent. And by then, the paper had a new management, <laughs> a new editor. And then uh, the paper embarked, the editorial board embarked on a campaign 
uh, to uh, uh, reveal the deaths and the illnesses that were occurring, and eventually it won the Pulitzer Prize. The Daily News won the Pulitzer Prize, the editorial board, for its coverage of the health effects, uh, the very health effects that five years earlier it had tried to squash. Uh, you know, so history has a strange way of evolving on issues like this, and uh, and I think that on uh, it's a lesson uh, that most media are very good at exposing. Uh, problems far away. The closer the problems get to home, the more difficult it becomes to expose them. <clears throat> you should have won the Pulitzer Prize for your series of prophetic reports. Um, I wanted to go to David Newman with NICOSH, that's the New York Committee for Occupational Safety and Health. Um, he's speaking in the documentary 9-11's Unsettled Dust. There was substantial data available prior to the event that would indicate um, issues of concern with the collapse of the, of the Twin Towers. Uh, one of those was the, you know, widely known and widely documented and widely advertised heavy use of asbestos during the construction of the World Trade Center project. So the, fig the figure that is in widespread circulation and uncontested is that there were 400 tons of asbestos used in uh, sprayed on fireproofing material in the Trade Center construction. That figure excludes probable additional asbestos used in pipe insulation and other applications. So there's a huge amount. I think it's safe to say that uh, whatever was in the World Trade Center was released into the general environment. Nothing disappeared. Nothing disappeared. Whatever was inside the World Trade Towers became what we breathe. That's David Newman with the New York Committee for Occupational Safety and Health. And, Juan, you talked about the New York Daily News winning the Pulitzer, but you didn't, and you should have. You were the one who led the way in exposing this. I wanted to bring in the director, Lisa Katzman, director and producer of this utterly devastating documentary, 9-11's Unsettled Death—Death. 9-11's uh, Unsettled Dust. It could be Unsettled Deaths, and we're going to be talking um, about that in a minute. But talk about why you chose to make this film and the significance of a crusading reporter like Juan Gonzalez and others who were putting out this information going against the financial establishment. Let's remember um, who the country's mayor was at the time, Rudy Giuliani, the Environmental Protection Agency administrator, who now says, OK, maybe she made a mistake. She dreads the 9-11 anniversary because of this. Christine Todd Whitman saying, everyone back to work. Well, it's an honor to be on the show, and hello to both of you. Hi, Juan. It's, it's good to hear you report on those first stories that you did again. Uh, yes, the reason that I was drawn to make the film is I'm a member of, I, I live downtown, I live four blocks from the World Trade Centers and then what became Ground Zero. And uh, I witnessed the recovery, the rescue and recovery effort through looking through my living room windows at it over a number of months, and it was very evident. Fortunately, at the time, I had a teaching job upstate, so I was not in my apartment on a full-time basis. But to anybody that lived here, who spent any time here or near downtown Manhattan, it, it defied one's senses and common sense to imagine that this wasn't a uh, a horrendously, I mean, off the charts, environmental disaster. And so the statement that the air is safe, the denials that were made were utterly absurd. I mean, the level of disconnect from reality is, is, is almost legendary, I would say, at this point. It, it's really hard to fathom that those things were said. And uh, the reason that I felt that I needed to make the film was to address that and to address the lack of accountability at the time. And then what ensued, you know, in the years afterward, is that that, account, that lack of accountability traveled through the courts. It traveled through the way that Republicans in Congress 
uh, thought about what should be done to help first responders. And the same people that were always touting, never forget, never forget, and constantly reminding us of the heroism of these responders were unwilling to do anything to actually help them. And so the hypocrisy of that, the rage that I felt over that as time went on, led me to want to make this film, which I began doing in 2010, when the first responders were making very, they had been making trips to DC to pass the James Adroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act for some time, but there was an intensification uh, you know, of those efforts in 2010, and that's when I began filming. I wanted to go to another part of the film. I mean, every three minutes, your jaw drops. This is the EPA's Hugh Kaufman and Kimberly Flynn, founder of 9-11 Environmental Action, speaking about the EPA's failure to warn people of the dangerous conditions at Ground Zero, and perhaps why. People told us, I'm not allowed to wear a respirator because there are cameras around, and they don't want the optics of me wearing a respirator down here cleaning up. Everyone came. Everyone who was affected came. There were responders. There were area workers. There were many, many residents and, and tenants association leaders. And there were scientists also who were bringing their information. Christy Todd Whitman, the head of EPA, who was telling the people the air is safe to breathe, owned a quarter of a million dollars in stock from Citigroup. And her husband worked for Citigroup Travelers Insurance Company had insurance policies such that if the air wasn't safe to breathe, it could cost Travelers Insurance half a billion, a billion dollars in claims. Well, guess who owns Travelers Insurance? Citigroup. And that's how the insurance company saved billions of dollars by Christy Todd Whitman's lie. Juan, talk about the significance of this, the personal financial connections, the, what this meant for so many people, uh, and continues to mean for the sick and the dying today. Well, Amy, I think people should uh, remember that uh, Christy Todd Whitman did not act alone. Uh, she basically was acting under orders. Uh, and it was later revealed, I think, by the Treasury Secretary under the Bush administration that uh, George Bush had, the president at the time, had directly ordered that Wall Street be reopened within a week of the attacks uh, because there was a fear in the administration that uh, the continued closing of the financial markets was going to have a disastrous effect on world capitalism. Uh, so basically, once Bush ordered that uh, the Wall Street be reopened, and that meant that thousands and thousands of financial industry workers had to come back uh, to downtown Manhattan, then the health officials, including Christy Todd Whitman, had to justify, <laughs> had to justify the orders. Uh, and rather than do the science first and then figure out what the policy, the policy was established and the science was made to fit the facts. Uh, it was later revealed by the, uh, uh, the EPA's inspector general report that the White House, uh, uh, the head of, the, uh, uh, of uh, the environmental policy at the White House, a guy by the name of James Connaughton, had actually rewritten the press releases that the EPA was putting out uh, to uh, to downplay the health in, impact. So this was a direct order from the White House to get Wall Street back up and running. And uh, the rest of the population of uh, lower Manhattan basically, uh, in essence, were collateral damage to that policy. This is President George W. Bush's EPA administrator, Christine Todd Whitman testifying at a 2007 congressional hearing on whether the federal government's actions at the 9-11 attack sites, at the pile, violated the rights of first responders and local residents. 
I got a call from the White House a day after from the Office of the Economic Advisor, which is not surprising. They're concerned about the economy of the country, saying, reminding me of the importance of the wall of Wall Street, of opening the stock market. I indicated that until that building was cleaned, until it was safe, it would be inappropriate, and that's the last I heard of that. It was cleaned, it was safe, as you have heard from Mr. Henshaw, for them to go back in, and they were allowed back in. Was it wrong to try to get the city back on its feet as quickly as possible, in the safest way possible? Absolutely not. Safety was first and foremost, but we weren't going to let the terrorists win. We weren't going to let the terrorists win. During the hearing, Whitman was questioned by Florida Democratic Congress member Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The EPA does have the, did have the ability to take over the site at the point that they felt that, uh, and that is under Presidential Decision Directive 62, Emergency Support Function 10, and the National Contingency Plan, uh, plan under CERCLA, the EPA could have taken over control of the site from the city as the lead agency if they felt that the city was not properly protecting their workers. So they certainly had the ability to do it, and you chose not to. So if you are saying that the law wasn't structured in New York to allow you to do that, then why didn't EPA step in? And take over. Congresswoman, um, under, as you know, uh, EPA would have, under certain circumstances, had the authority to take over the site. What had to be proven in order to invoke the, the CERCLA, the uh, Superfund Act, substantive, substantial, and imminent danger. And the readings that we were getting relative, and this was relative to the overall era, I'm talking more about outside of the pile, we're not indicating that, and we were working in a collegial fashion with the city of New York. Again, as far as the workers on the pile, what our, we were tasked by OSHA to do the, I mean, excuse me, by FEMA, to do the health and safety monitoring, to monitor the air, and we we did that, and then we provided as but many I, respirators. You, we were you know, not when it comes to, to imminent, substantial and imminent danger, are you talking about immediate death, horrible sickness uh, within within weeks? Because methyl methylthelia, the the cancer that is that that is the right. result of exposure to asbestos, does not manifest itself substantially or immediately. It's, it could be years, but it's almost certain. So how is it that you didn't step in and and exercise your authority given that knowledge, which has been known for years? The, uh, the gentleman, the gentlelady's time has expired. The witness may answer the question. Uh, Congresswoman, that was based on what the interpretation of what our legal ability was to act by in consultation with counsel at the time. And that was Jerry Nadler, a New York Congress member um, who represented the Ground Zero area, chairing the meeting. Shoot, uh, Christine Todd Whitman being questioned by Florida Democratic Congress member Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Before we go to break, and he then hear the story of Z Joe Zadroga, you may think you know it because his name is on the law. But I don't think you know the details. Juan, your comment on what uh, Christine Todd Whitman was saying and the information that was being suppressed from the highest levels. Nadler would go on to say that she and America's mayor, Mayor Giuliani, should be tried for criminally negligent, for criminal negligence. Well, I think it's important to recall the role of Rudy Giuliani as well, because, you see, the EPA was a monitoring agency, the, age, the federal agency that should have assured the protection of all the people at Ground Zero was OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And OSHA deliberately did not enforce uh, its standards for working on a, on a dangerous uh, site like that because Giuliani insisted that he was in charge. He was the incident commander on the, uh, uh, on the pile, and he kept, he maintained his control of all information and all activity at the pile long after what it should have been just a rescue operation. So therefore, OSHA was not allowed <laughs> by uh, Mayor Giuliani to actually uh, conduct its, its uh, legally required business. Uh, and uh, as a result, many, many people ended up being exposed and getting sick and not having proper protection. And uh, we should never forget the role of Rudy Giuliani uh, in uh, uh, allowing uh, that situation to go on for so long. And that was very different at the Pentagon, which was also attacked, where they had the proper attire. We're going to talk with Joe Zadroga in a minute. The bill is the James Zadroga Act, his son, who has since died. Stay with us. Yes.